of all, I want you to use a slight stretch of your imagination and see this as a shepherd's stick, crook, yeah. rod, whatever. <laughs> okay? That's a lot of imagination. Cam. It is quite a lot yeah. of imagination, but you know, <laughs> you know, I just want you to picture that for a moment. Um, we've been singing, he split the sea so I could we'll walk, walk right, right through, through it. it. What actually happened? Well, the situation was that the Israelites had left Egypt, which is a type of the world. It was a bad, bad place. Very evil, full of lots of evil people who wanted to keep the Israelites in extreme poverty, yep. in extreme horrible situations. They were slaves. Slaves don't hold very much and they're worked to death. So they were in a very bad place in the world. And Moses, who had a past, just like Donald Trump, he had a past. And there were some things in Moses' past which were not good. But he was God's chosen man. That's right. And God met with him, and God said to him, he, he told him what to do. You're going to lead my people out of slavery. Moses, oops, okay. But he obeyed. Praise God, he obeyed. And as they left Egypt, they were in a desert very wilderness place and the Egyptians suddenly realized that all their workers had left the country everybody who did any major work had gone and they suddenly thought we want them back and so they sent their army after these Israelites after their slaves and Moses was at the head of the Israelites uh, the army, the, the, the Israelites suddenly looked behind him. The army's coming after us. Help! Moses, help! And in, right in front of them was this huge sea, huge, vast expanse of water. And Moses did what most good people should do. Lord, help! And he got a word from God. Yeah. And he, God says, take your shepherd's Staff. rod, mm -hmm. stick, whatever you call it, staff, thank you, <laughs> and put it into the water. Now, in the natural, this does not make sense. How can putting your shepherd's staff into a vast sea of water make the slightest bit of difference? Well, it didn't make the slightest bit of difference. But... The word from God. Yes, amen. And amen. The acting on the authority saved the nation. Amen. Now see this shepherd's staff <coughs> as authority. God given authority. And that's what intercession is. It's taking your God given authority. Coupled with the word that God's given you and using it to change circumstances. On this particular occasion, it's changed the circumstances for a nation. There are two, well, at least two parts to intercession. First of all, there is the, the personal intercession where you intercede for your family and your friends and your relatives and your neighbors and individual people that God lays on your heart. And then there is interceding on a national level. Yeah. Changing the spiritual climates over a nation. I was going to do this next week, but the Lord said, no, bring it this week. Okay. So, Hazel Hill writes in her interceding Christian book, which I advise you all to get hold of. It's, it's good. As Christians, we are a key factor as to what happens on the face of the earth. Amen. Heaven waits for the believers to pray and to intercede and to be obedient to God before it begins to move. And actually, that's before heaven can begin to move. There is activity in the heavenlies, not only by angels, but by principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And we know we've, that's a familiar verse, isn't it? We're fighting against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly, heavenly places. places. That's where we are to fight. And it's not just for the person next to you. It's for all of us. 
We all are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We all have the ability, we all have the right, and we all have the anointing to stand there and pray and intercede for the nation. And it's important that we intercede using God's word. And then we're all in unity. Amen. Praying the same thing yes. together Hallelujah. so that heaven can move in power. And split that sea and save the nations. It's international. It, think about young Daniel in Babylon. He prayed nonstop. You know, he was in a godless nation. They were, they were bad. They were heathens. They were godless. But Daniel, he was a man of prayer. He was a man of God. And he prayed. He prayed when he wasn't allowed to pray. The people wanted to get rid of him. And so they made a law that if people prayed for the next city, so anybody except the king, they would be thrown in the lion's den. And the king was such a... Bless him anyhow. He, he went along with it, full of pride. Daniel still carried on praying, even though he was not allowed legally to carry on praying. And he didn't hide. He still prayed in the open window. He still mm -hmm. prayed his prayers. He was thrown into the lion's dead, but the angels came and closed the lion's mouth, so yeah. he was saved. Amen. So what was the result of Daniel's prayer? Daniel 6, verse 25 and 26, there's a decree of every part of the kingdom of Babylon, this heathen country, that everyone must fear and reverence the God of Daniel because of how good he is. And, and this edict went round so that everybody had to hear how good, how alive and how powerful the God of Daniel was. We're a key factor in what happens on the face of the earth. Yes, we, we all are, know 2 Chronicles 7.14. I'm going to put a little bit of my translation on here. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people, are you God's people? Yes, amen. Are you called by his name? Yes. You're Christians, you're called by his name shall humble themselves, shall <coughs> fall on their knees and intercede. Mm -hmm. Seek my face. Seek what I want to do. Seek my will. Seek me. Inquire. Ask. Lord, what shall I pray on behalf of the nations? Turn away from that which is not bringing about the things of God. Your sins are already forgiven, folks. Absolutely. So you don't need to pray for your sins to be forgiven because that one's ticked off already. Completed, done. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, we still do things that we fill our lives with things that um, leave no time for God. And sometimes we may need to turn away from those things that we're doing that's filling our lives and not leaving room for us to intercede. And that's what you can call your wicked ways. They might not be wicked, but they're, they're taken away from what you should be doing. And pray. Then, I will. Yes, you will, Lord. Mm. God will. He can then. He can come in on and, and heal the land. He will be healing. He'll carry on. It, it's this perpetual thing. It doesn't just... It's not just one time for it. He will carry on. He will be healing the land. He will be working on our behalf, on behalf of nations. Our prayers open the door for the kingdom of heaven to be established on earth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Matthew 18, 18. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. This is using your authority. It's said twice. It's said in Matthew 16, 19 again. I give you the keys to the kingdom. Who's got the keys to the kingdom? We have. That's it. The keys open doors and close doors. They permit and they allow. You have the keys to the kingdom. You have the authority to bind the actions of the, the spiritual forces in high places, those wicked things, and to open the door for the kingdom of heaven to come in, to come in Amen. onto the earth. Amen. 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 Wonderful. <laughs> Bless the Lord. 
Awesome. You know, it's so vital that we pray, isn't it? Hallelujah. Well, you know, this morning it's a real th thrill to have uh, Diane and her husband. They live in Wolverhampton. They've come to share about the work of CAP. As many of you know about the work of CAP. We've heard about CAP. But, you know, it's a, as a church, we just want to know more about CAP. Uh, Val was hoping, uh, who comes to church here, to run CAP course for us. But she's decided it's just a little bit too much for her. And that's good. You know, it's great when people want to do something, have got a heart for something, and then they decide they just can't do it. And I honor Val for that. I really do. And I bless her uh, because uh, she has no need to feel guilt or anything about it. She's not here this morning. But if you see her, tell her, well, Pastor Will thinks she's done a great job. Hallelujah. Because uh, it's so much easier for someone to hear what God is saying, have a if you ever started out with something because you believe it's God and then you get through with something and halfway through or three quarters of the way you think, hmm, this was more me than it was him. You know, that happens to a lot of us, so it does. But this morning it is a real treat to have uh, Diane with us. Uh, they've come from Wolverhampton, as I say, to come and share about the work of CAP. The how as a, we as a church can help in dealing with the cancer that's in our society called poverty. So my sister, come and join us. Let's give her a warm welcome. <clears throat> These metal stands, my iPad case always. <laughs> yeah, it's magnetic and it sticks. <laughs> anyway, it's great. Turn around, I can see everybody. It's great just to be here with you all this morning. Thank you so much to the leadership for inviting us. Um, yeah, my name's Diane Kruchek, often called Di, and uh, my husband Len has come with me this morning to be my roadie, really, but um, it's, it's just great to meet with other parts of the body of Christ, and, uh, you know, we are obviously missing our worship in Wolverhampton, but to this morning I don't feel we've missed anything because we've loved worshipping with you, and it's great, isn't it, just to meet with other parts of our body. Amen. We are one body. We're not very far away. <clears throat> So, um, my role is I'm the area manager for Christians Against Poverty in the West Midlands, which means I oversee all the debt centres, the release groups, the life skills, and the job clubs um, around this area. Len and I trained as Cap Money uh, coaches eight years ago, and that was our first journey into Cap, really. And right from day one, I've been gripped by it. I believe in it as much today as I did then. In fact, I am more passionate about it today than I was then. And that's because I've seen now it works with my own eyes. I've seen all the lives that have been changed. Yes, people set free from debt and people that have got jobs. But do you know what's my greatest joy is all the people who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we can't beat that. That is what we want in CAP for people. That is our heart. Yes, we're working through helping them in their needs. But in those needs, we know we, know we can get them debt free. We know we can get them work. But actually, that's not enough, is it? It's not enough because people are still trapped in all their mess that same mess as we were all in once and you know every day I thank God that somebody cared enough to tell me about Jesus and about what he had done for me and so that fires me on every day to tell people that same thing so today, all across the UK, hundreds of individuals are joining together to hear about the work of Christians Against Poverty, how we're transforming lives both today and forever and through their partnership, CAP's partnership with local churches, so churches just like your church here, um, with debt help centres, job clubs, release groups and life skills, and with CAP Money. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, some of our work. So Hebrews 13 verse 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the unchanging one. He's constant. He's faithful. So we don't need to worry that God loves us because he was loving yesterday. He loves us today and he'll love us forever. 
We don't need to worry whether God will have mercy because his word tells us that his mercies are new every morning and that he will forever be merciful and forgive us. So therefore, if Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, what about us? What about you and I, the body of Christ, the body of the unchanging one? Do we, as Christ's church, look like the first church? The church that was taught and trained by Christ himself directly? He never changes, but have we, as his church changed? Do we display that same radical love and compassion of Jesus himself? Can we be accused of being friends of sinners, of hanging around with the wrong crowd? Because that's what Jesus did. Are we a church that, like Christ, declares that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to bring freedom to the captives? Because that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did when he walked this earth yesterday. And we, as Jesus followers, represent him today. So just as Jesus doesn't change, we, his church, shouldn't change. Yes, we change our methods. We change our styles. But the beating heart of the church is to be radically outreaching, proclaiming boldly salvation, meeting practical needs, and healing the broken should remain constant and unchanging. So this morning, as we celebrate and promote the work that CAP's done all over the UK to serve the poor and save the lost, you know, CAP has a really clear vision, and it's to help the church be all that Jesus imagined, dreamed of, and left behind. And CAP's work only exists because of the local church, so because of you and us. Every family that's helped out of debt, every person who's helped back into employment, every person set free from addiction, every person helped to budget and given life skills to live on a low income happens through the local church. CAP exists to equip the local church by meeting practical needs alongside the love and the family. That's what church does best. So let's use what we've got. And, you know, most importantly, like I've already said, people are given a chance to find a new life in Christ. Because the one who was the same yesterday and today and forever is also the one who's passionate about transforming the mess of our yesterdays into a new today and a glorious forever. But whilst CAP has a massive vision, and we're working with over 500 frontline services, for Jesus, it was all about one life at a time. So let me just tell you about a man called Stuart. Yesterday, for Stuart, looked hopeless. With over 25,000 pounds worth of debt, and no job, he couldn't, surprisingly, see a way out. One year, he counted over 500 job applications, and from that, he only had six replies. So it's no surprise that when Stuart came to CAP, he was crushed and could see no way out. And I know today there might well be people in this room who are in that same position, who are out of work, and feeling a bit hopeless about it. Might be people in debt and feeling hopeless about it. You might be in a desperate place today. But you know, thanks to CAP's debt help and CAP's job club, Stuart is debt free. He's now working in Morrison's and he has a hope for the future. He has a fresh start and the ability to provide for himself. And the best part of Stuart's story is, you'll probably guess, it doesn't stop there. So through CAP's partnership with his local church, 
Simon met Jesus in a powerful way. Uh, Stuart, sorry. <laughs> he grasped his faith with both hands and now he has a promise of eternal life too. So whilst this is incredible, the reality is that thousands of people in our communities, in Rugeley, in Wolverhampton, are stuck living in that hopeless, depressing today. That's where they are today. That's how they've woken up today. They feel useless and embarrassed because they have no work. They're struggling with an addiction that's threatening to tear their families apart. And debt does that, tears families apart. But Jesus wants to step into those todays through you and I, through his church, and turn them into a yesterday, a thing of the past, a distant memory, where being stuck in debt becomes a yesterday, where being out of work becomes a yesterday where that life-controlling addiction becomes a yesterday. Because Jesus wants their day today to be a day of hope and their tomorrows to be worth living for. Amen. And he's not only here to bring hope on this earth. I think you've got the message by now. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And his heart is to spend eternity forever with all that he's made. He so loved the world that whoever believed in him may have eternal life, a forever in the presence of Christ and the Father himself. I was a centre manager for a debt centre in Wolverhampton for seven years, and I've seen so many stories like that where I've gone in and they have been suicidal or just desperate. And we've been able to bring hope through our church. Not just me, it's a team. I only, was only one cog in the works because it takes a church. It's a church ministry. It takes a church to love somebody, to draw them into a family. But it, I've already said it's what we do so well. And you know today, and I look around our church, and it's not just our church, because we're not out to populate our own churches, but I can see so many people that I think, I remember going in to see them that first time. I remember meeting them, and there they are, praising the Lord now. You know, just different people. And what is better than that? That's what I love, that I can see the change in people. So today, CAP has over 500 church-based services all across the UK who are serving the poor and saving the lost. We also work in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. But our debt centres, and we've got 306 of them, help the most vulnerable people in our nation, providing them with a real way out of debt, which causes such heartache. In our survey, 38% of our clients said they had considered or attempted suicide before CAP stepped in. That's tragic, isn't it? It's tragic. And then in 2013, God grew CAP's vision to tackle some of the main causes of poverty, unemployment and addiction by launching CAP Job Clubs and then release groups. <coughs> and you know, our job clubs see 38% of their members finding work. There's no wonder that the Department of Work and Pensions back us from the top. We're also piloting a new service, CAP Life Skills, which helps people to budget and navigate the challenges of everyday life, living on a low income. So this has come out of our CAP Money course, which we've been running for many years, which is a course um, that Will mentioned, that, um, where people are taught to budget. Our um, strap line is budget, save and spend for our CAP Money course. You know, most people, it's not about being in debt. That's not the point of the course. The point is to teach anybody who deals with money 
how to handle it better. So you come in, um, you don't need to discuss anything of your personal situation if you don't wish to, although there are people there who can help you. And then you deal with it. We have an online budget sheet. Um, Len and I live by this principle. That's how you know we started and we live on the principle. And it's about using cash. I know that's really, really old-fashioned these days. But do you know, when I go to Morrison's, if I've got £30 in my purse, I don't spend £31, which I might have done on my card. I spend under £30. It stops me buying other things. It's the way. We have the cash in our hand. We watch it go down. We have a card. We pop in the hole in the wall. Well, yeah, we don't need to, do we? We know what we do. <laughs> so, <coughs> we do that as well. And uh, that's, you know, it's a great way of reaching out into our communities. So it's often the first step into CAP for churches is through the CAP money course. You can get people trained in your church to lead this course. Len has led courses in our local primary school, in um, Sure Start, centers um we were we nearly got it into the prison unfortunately at the last minute there was some sort of hitch um but there are a lot around the country that are delivering them in prisons as well you can take it anywhere into the community and we make no apology about being christians but i'll tell you it doesn't put people off people need help they're not put off because we're christians people refer to cap even though you can't miss it. It is in the name, Christians Against Poverty. They know we offer to pray with all our clients. That doesn't stop them either, referring to us. People do know, you know. They know that it works and that the church has a great tool in their community to reach people and help people and love people. You don't get that in many places, do you? <coughs> They also do cap money for students and for schools. Um, don't they, any of us? No, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, if you feel that's something God is speaking to you about, don't, don't hold back on it, okay? Talk to somebody. Come and talk to Len and I about it. Talk to Will about it. Talk to somebody about it. Because if God's speaking, we need to be obedient. <coughs> okay, what's tomorrow for cap? Well, today's been amazing, but Jesus, the unchanging one, wants more of his church on the front line, being the church he always dreamed of. So CAP is pushing to double the size of its church-based services in the next five years. It's a bit less now. To have 1,000 services by 2021. Now, if you know anything about CAP, if you know anything about John Kirkby, our founder and international director, you'll know he is a man of faith. <laughs> He is. He just takes the most outrageous steps if he knows that's what God's saying. And he believes for this, and so we believe for it, because we've seen God do amazing things, and we believe in God is going to do more amazing things. But we need churches to play their part. We need you to get involved. If, you, if somebody phones CAP at the moment from this postcode... I'm afraid they'll be told there is nothing in this area. There is no help for them. Now, yes, we will signpost them. We will offer to pray with them even on the phone. But unfortunately, that will be where it ends. So you can be as encouraged as you like by what I say this morning, but it's not going to change anybody's life unless you choose to get involved. And I know that sounds a bit harsh, but that's the reality. But there's different ways you can get involved. So, yes, you can look at getting involved in one of our services. You can give. But you can pray. And we've heard about prayer this morning and the importance. You know, CAP is built on prayer. Totally. If the prayer stops, that's it. CAP's finished. I'm out for sure. <clears throat> so we don't make any apology about asking people to give to the work that we do 
Because the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever still calls his disciples to radical generosity and giving that prioritises the poor in their neighbourhood and nation. And he still calls us to go beyond financial giving. So if you're a prayer, please pray for CAP. If you sign up this morning, we can send you regular updates and you'll know whether what you're praying for is happening or what you can pray for next. But you know, by giving just a few pounds a month, you can turn the hell of someone's yesterday into a no more and a new day that's transformed forever. And we're going to uh, just watch a DVD now about the work of CAP. I'm just going to carry on a bit while the um, AV team get that sorted out. I think that makes more sense than uh, all sitting in the dark, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about a free gift. We love a bargain in cap, you know. And uh, so I brought along this morning, just about to see it, but it does exist, a book nevertheless.
I was frightened because I knew I had so much paperwork with them. I didn't know what to expect or where to begin, to be honest with you. And she sat me down and she was absolutely so, so kind and just made me feel at ease. And um, we started our journey. I remember actually helping with, with food as well that day because when they had no food, the bankruptcy was all filed and filled out at the head office, which was amazing. It was in two packs. And one was for me and one was for bankruptcy. And then we went up, Emma and I went up to the court. It was amazing. Just, you know, the way it had been. And uh, today I'm full of the Holy Spirit and I do believe this is God's will. And um, I feel that I've always had a hole in my soul all of my life. But it's been fulfilled now. So I feel I have peace of mind and I feel quite content. You know, and I'm really grateful, really, really grateful for Christians getting property. Because without them, I wouldn't be here today. Being so alive, I don't smoke anymore. I have my family back. I have a contact with my mum and dad that I've never had. We, we get on, we laugh about so much stuff. There's no arguments. And I believe that had I not made the decision of contacting Cap, probably would have never got back. So I want to thank you, Cap. Yeah, the Cap Dog's building, there's something for everybody that's out there. And since I got a job within the first month, absolutely fantastic. New wife, new lead, all systems go. I'm a Christian and I love it. I'm a happy Christian. So thanks a lot out there. I uh, love you people at Cap. Since meeting Christians Against Poverty, I've found a faith which I'm truly grateful for. I'm debt free. I don't drink anymore. I've got my family back. I'm a nan. I worship every Sunday and I'm so happy to go forward for the rest of my life debt free and happy and for that I'm truly grateful. Would you consider giving £12 a month to Christians Against Poverty to change somebody's life like mine forever? Thank you. <coughs> so there we are, you met Stuart on there and other people and it is great isn't it to see real people you know, um, so let me just carry on then with my free offer. It's still on, it's still free offer. Um, so if you'd like a copy of this book, this is the story of uh, Cap. Really, it's taken from jo John Kirkby, our founder and international director, his diary. So it's raw, it's real, it's a faith builder, and it'll probably make you cry if you're anything like me and a lot of people. I've had several people, someone said it to me this week again, I started reading it and I couldn't put it down. So do come and get your free copy. All I ask is on the form that's somewhere around you, just fill in your name and address. That just puts you on our database. That's not to give any money. It's just to put you on our database so we can keep you informed of the work of Christians Against Poverty. Now you might say, oh I've already had that book. Um, if you want to become a life changer and you you've already read Nevertheless, then we've got some others, 12 stories of actual lives that have been changed. Or you could have that one instead anyway, if you preferred. So do bring that to us at the table at the end and um, you know, get your free book. Don't miss a free offer. Because even if you've, even if you've got a pile by your bed or you don't read, um, you can give it away. It's a proper book. It's got a price on the back. So... Um, <laughs> You know, give it away to somebody else. Spread the message, really, of CAP. That's what we want to do. Okay, so, um, as I said at the beginning, I want to give you all the opportunity to change someone's today by giving a monthly donation. You see, we, we call our givers life changers. I love that name because that's just what it's doing. It's changing lives. And uh, we have over 28,000, don't look what it says on there, we have over 28,000 people who give just a small amount each month. So if you would like to give to the work of Christians Against Poverty, and I know not everybody can, and that's fine, there's no pressure, but if you would like to, if you're able to, then even a couple of pound makes a difference. And on that same form, there's the opportunity to fill in your bank details. Um, or you may not have your bank details with you, or you may want to go home and think about how much you want to give. That's all fine. You can just tick a little box, leave us your details, of your phone number, your email, and we'll contact you and sort it out with you in the next couple of weeks. 
Because if we're going to double our services in the next five years, we have got to 1,000 um, CAP services. We've got to get more people giving. We don't receive any government funding. We never have. Why? Because we refuse to compromise our values. And I know that, you know, you're with us on that. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to find Christ and be part of a local church. Why can't we be at the forefront of social change again as the church? We can. So can I just ask you to just think about whether you're in that position um, to give. And if you're already a life changer, thank you. We really appreciate you. And if you're not able to give but you want to get involved, you can pray. Please, please pray for us. We need it. <clears throat> so on behalf of the poor and needy clients that CAP will help through any contribution you make, whether it's financial or prayerful, we just want to thank you. Thank you for inviting us to come along here today to share about the work of CAP. If you want to know more, if you want to know any more about our job clubs, our release groups, our life skills course, our cat money course, anything, or if you just want to chat, just come to the table because I chat well. Okay, so come over, find out about the work of Christians Against Poverty and get your free book anyway. Okay, thank you.